Hello, I'm Jamila Masaeva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books. Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. If you're interested in my books, please make sure to email me at info.jamilamasaeva.com. I'll link it down below in the description box as well. If you are new to my channel, welcome here. I talk about soft skills, etiquette, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm always delighted to see you here. In today's video, I want to talk about how to look more confident, knowing what I already know from the experience that I've had, from the courses that I've been teaching, as well as from the book that I recently finished reading, which is called Louder Than Words. It's written by Joe Navarro, who was a former FBI agent. And from this book, as well as from the knowledge that I previously garnered, I want to create this video that can help you to become and look and feel more confident. So first things first, what is a body language? Body language is everything that we communicate without using verbal message. So without saying things, you still communicate a message about who you are as a person because there are other things that also speak to you that are not necessarily verbal. And that includes your hand movements, your gestures, your posture, your look, how you look, your manners. So etiquette is an important part of body language. And what is confidence? Confidence is a non-verbal message. It's an attitude. It's something we cannot necessarily touch, but we do feel it when we see a confident person. There's an aura. There is this untangible thing about this person, and that is a non-verbal aspect. Uh, so in order to be confident, we have to work on non-verbal parts of communication, which is body language that can help us create a look of a confident person. In this book, Louder Than Words, Joe Navarro says that whenever someone has the same, let's say two people have the same kind of skill set and the same kind of experience and the same kind of diploma, the only thing that will make one stand out more is their confidence, is how their attitude, how and what they translate non-verbally through their body. And in that aspect, I want to add that etiquette and manners also comes into this whole emblem of uh, creating this a confident image. So if you have all of that figured out, then you're going to be able to stand out from a pool of other applicants or other people that share the same kind of skill set, experience and knowledge as you do. The number one tip when it comes to creating a confident body language is having a very strong eye contact with the person you're talking to. A good eye contact establishes trust, rapport, it makes you look confident, trustworthy, reliable. People believe you when you look into their eyes. Again, eye contact is something that can vary from culture to culture. In Asian countries, for example, a direct eye contact might not be something that is acceptable or if it's done it has to be kept to minimal in the middle east a man and a woman would not have a very direct eye contact you have to be mindful of the culture of the person that you are meeting to know how much and how intensive you can look into their eyes but generally eye contact is something that bonds people and makes people trust each other a good test to this is if you can notice or if you can describe the eye color of the person that you're talking to, that means you're having a very good eye contact with that person. When we're having an eye contact with a person that we're talking to, depending on, us, on the circumstances and the context in which we're meeting, the gaze could be dispersed to different areas of the face. When we're looking into someone's eyes, of course, our eyes lock into their eyes if we really like the person, but then we also have our gaze diversified, dispersed to the areas nearby. There are acceptable areas depending on the context in which we're having a conversation. If this is a business meeting, then your gaze should be on the eyes, there should be a direct eye contact, and you can look up in the triangle here. So this is called the business gaze or the power gaze, almost like you're looking into their middle or the, the eye in the triangle. So that is permissible when you're doing a business talk or when you're meeting your client, if you're meeting a student or a professor, that's an acceptable gaze. If you're going for someone in a more social setting, you know, you're meeting friends for a cocktail or, you know, a client for a cocktail, it's a more social setting, then your gaze could be lower. So it could be on the eyes, down bottom, the cheeks, up to the nose. So this is the lower triangle where you can look at. And then there is a gaze that's called intimate. So that's 
down to the lips, down to the décolleté area. So that's the permissible gaze if you're having more intimate relationship with a person. This is important to know because if you're meeting a client and you see that your gaze is going down to their lips or their neck or chest area, try to lift up your gaze back to their eyes and up above the triangle. You have to be mindful of that because you don't want to put the person in front of you into an uncomfortable situation because our eye contact can tell the person how we feel about them. Another thing that I want to teach you, if someone is looking at your lips maybe or your chest area and that makes you feel uncomfortable, what you can do is stare at their hairline. Apparently when you look at someone's hairline, it makes them feel uncomfortable and that will mean that the person who is looking at your lips and making you feel uncomfortable will turn their gaze back into your eyes uh, because they now feel uncomfortable and they want to pay attention to where you're looking. So this is a trick you can try and see if it works. Another tip that I'll teach you is in case you're brought up in a culture where it's not taught to look into someone's eyes or rather it's taught not to look into anyone's eye or maybe you're just a shy person by nature and you're struggling with having an eye contact with people but that's very important in your job. What you could do is instead of looking into someone's eye directly into their eyes, you could look up here in the front lobe here between the eyebrows because when you look at that point, so that's the third eye, it makes the person feel like you're looking into their eyes where in reality you're not. So why am I teaching all of this is because eye contact is very important and in fact when two people are looking into each other's eyes, if the person, person who takes the gaze off is often considered weaker or more subordinate to the person who prolongs the eye contact. So in this eye struggle so to speak, you want to be the one who is able to maintain the eye contact regardless of how intense it is. So in order to do that, you have to train yourself to look into people's eyes. Number two is smile. We all know that it's a very powerful tool of a body language. Having a genuine smile can unlock different doors of opportunities for you. But when you are smiling, you have to keep in mind the timing and the nature of your smile. With the timing, I mean when you are someone who is just has this smile on the face the whole time and even before you get to meet the person, you already have a smile on your face. The person meeting you might think that the smile is not genuine or it's rather a face mask on you that is always there. Of course, some jobs require you to have this face mask on like hospitality and retail. You have to constantly be smiling, but I'm talking more of a situations where you grant the smile to the person that you're talking to. When you do so, make sure to take a little bit of time. So first meet the person and then after meeting them, take your time with granting them a genuine smile. When you smile before meeting them, it might be perceived not genuine. But when you give them a smile right after meeting them, with taking a couple of minutes before you actually give a smile, it will be considered much more genuine. And with a smile, you have to keep in mind that it has to be genuine. And people can distinguish a genuine smile from a fake smile because of the muscular movements on your face. When it's a genuine smile, it's the one that creates this little wrinkles around your eye and also around your lips because when you smile your muscles contract so then you have these wrinkles around the upper upper corner of your mouth as well as the crow's feet here around your eyes but when it's a fake smile you only smile from your mouth there's no smiling in the eyes we all know that mouth can lie our lips can lie but our eyes can never lie so the only way to distinguish a genuine smile from a fake one is through the eyes when you smile make sure that you smile from your eyes from your heart as well as you take a time to grant the smile to the person that you're meeting Point number three is maintaining open body posture. What I mean by that is that your chest area, your belly area, your hands, your palms should always be visible to people that you're talking. This translates as confident look. The reason it's, it's like that is because we're naturally inclined to cover our torso or our belly from people we don't feel comfortable around. So that's why we walk away from situations where we're scared or where we don't want to approach or we try to cross our hands so that no one can approach us or we'll put our bag in front of us as a way to protect ourselves from others. So there's going to be a physical obstruction between our belly and the person in front of us when we feel not comfortable around them. But if you want to translate an image of a person who feels comfortable and confident, you have to trick your mind and body into thinking that you are so. 
There is a reason why we cover our torso from people when we don't feel comfortable or confident. And that's because our torso is where our vital body organs are located. So by covering up from the people, we protect ourselves. You can even see it amongst animals. For example, when a cat feels comfortable around the person to expose its torso or its belly area to be rubbed. And that means I trust you. I allow you to touch my belly. That's the same thing that translates into human behavior. We try to hide our torso from people we don't feel comfortable or confident around. So if that's the case, you don't feel comfortable or confident, but you want to make them seem like you do, you have to uncover your torso. You have to expose your belly, your chest, open your posture, your shoulders, as well as the hands to the people in front of you. The fourth tip, speaking of body and posture, is the hands. So as I already explained, whenever your palms are visible, your thumbs are up, it means that you're comfortable and confident. This kind of open palm gesture always translates to confidence. But also another hand gesture that is underutilized by a lot of women is called steepling. It's when you put your fingertips together like that and your thumbs are facing up like that. Whenever you have your hands like this, this is a gesture that a lot of politicians use whenever they're thinking or trying to say something very important that magnifies the message. It makes your idea or your verbal message sound a lot more powerful. Generally speaking, thumbs up and thumbs out, they create the image of confidence. Even if you love leaving your hands in your pocket, make sure that you stick your thumbs out from the pocket because when your thumbs are out and visible, it translates into confidence. The fifth tip that will help you immediately connect with the person and make you feel confident is mirroring. Mirroring is reflecting the other person's body movements and gestures. But mirroring does not only include body language mirroring, but also verbal mirroring, which means using the same kind of terms and words that the person that you're talking to is using. Of course, don't be like a little monkey mimicking everything that they're doing immediately. Take your time with mirroring. Don't do it immediately because that will be felt. Try to incorporate it slowly throughout the conversation. What I mean by verbal mirroring is using the same kind of words that the person that you're meeting with is using. For example, if they call, as Joe was explaining in the book, if they call something an issue and not a problem, then refer to that as an issue, not a problem. If someone says um, something looks stunning, then try to use the word stunning instead of say beautiful. Make sure that your vocabulary is reflected and that way the person you're talking to will feel more comfortable around you. Interestingly, I think a good example to this would be if we meet a foreigner that speaks our language and then throughout the conversation they'll throw in some, you know, some um, words in our language. We immediately feel more connected to that person, almost like we understand them or they understand us. We usually love to be associated or love to be around the people that remind us of ourselves, either in terms of their body language or the way they talk or the way they think. So great minds think alike, but also great minds are drawn into each other. When we feel like this person is a reflection of who we are, we tend to be drawn to that person. So mirroring helps you trick in a way the other person that you are one of them and you can use it in your own benefit. The sixth tip is having good manners. And it's not something that I say as an etiquette consultant, but it's Joe Navarro, a former FBI agent who's written a lot of books on body language and looking confident. He explains that good manners and etiquette are essential for looking confident. Uh, interestingly, he highlights that, you know, if you really want to know the value of good manners, try working for someone who doesn't have any manners, and then you will know what good manners are. He says that etiquette is the art of making people feel comfortable and I couldn't agree more. Um, and he explains that, you know, nowadays people think that etiquette are some strict rules that make you follow a rigid guidelines of what you have to do and what you can't do. And a lot of people say it's so cliche, it's so old school, so traditional. But in reality, etiquette evolves with life and etiquette is just a way um, to making others feel comfortable and confident around you, uh, putting people at ease, so to speak. 
Joe explains that etiquette is about being attentive to everything around you and understanding how your actions will affect others. He says in FBI they call it situational awareness, is when you know what the situation is like and what is expected of you in terms of actions, how you should act. And I always say to my students that etiquette prepares you in advance to a possibility of situation. Um, you know, for example, you're going to dinner and how you should be acting there in order to look proper and look be a good guest or be a good host so etiquette is something that is very important to creating a good confident look the seventh important tip for looking confident that Joe spends a whole section on in his books is called is looks and grooming when he highlights the importance of this concept called the beauty dividend is when you look a certain way you're most likely to be successful get hired you know get an audition whatever it might be and although we we're trying to stay away from this by judging people based on their looks somehow our minds are hardwired or programmed into selecting a certain uh, visual looks in you know when we're getting married uh, even little babies as he mentions in the book are most likely to look and smile at the faces that are symmetrical so he says it's something that we are born with and though looks are something of course naturally you're given a certain look it's not really just about your features because you might have the most amazing features but not utilize them well what is more important is how groomed your features or how groomed you are so the good news is that good looks and good grooming is very much attainable and it all depends on your desire to work on yourself. So grooming includes a whole range of activities starting from taking care of your body, hygiene, you know, eating healthy, making sure you do some sports and activities, you stay fit, um, that you nourish your mind and nourish your soul. It's a, an amalgam of different kind of activities that make you look presentable to the world. Joe explains that our minds are programmed to understand that good grooming is equal to vitality, it's equal to success, it's equal to social adjustment. So before you're able to get success, you have to groom yourself into being successful and then once you feel that way, you'll certainly attain it. And the final aspect that Joe explains in his book for looking confident is making sure that you dress and you dress well. Uh, I love this term that he uses, he says dress for respect. Joe explains that if your attire expresses or communicates a message that you don't care, other people are most likely not going to care either. There is this phrase that says clothes make a man and he explains how our mind and our actions change according to what we wear. It's no surprise that you know uh, a certain professions wear a certain type of uniform. Once you put that uniform on, your mindset is different. You're ready to take actions according to the job requirements that you have. And he explains that casualness is something that kills credibility and you can never go wrong with looking sharp. If you are doubtful of what to wear and how to wear, what you can do is look up to the managers above you, uh, look up to the people in your work that you want the same position as they already have and try to emulate their style, try to dress accordingly like they do. Uh, if you're invited to a meeting, for example, that is um, requires a certain type of dress code, make sure that you abide by that dress code. He explains that if you really want to impress people, if you really want to be looking confident, you have to take care of not just your grooming, your body, your nail, your hands, but also how you're wearing and what you're wearing. Also, he knows that when you are dressing up, you have to keep in mind the context in which you're dressing up. Say you're invited to a business meeting, you don't arrive there coming in sandals or flip-flops or jeans. Um, however, is that same business meeting is at the beach, on the sand, of course you can come with sandals and flip-flops. So depending on the context in which you're meeting, your dress code will change accordingly and you have to be mindful of that. And finally, the last aspect I'll leave you with the dress up is if you don't have a particular style and you are searching for one that will make you look comfortable and confident, try to find a role model that you can look up to and emulate. After all, we learn, all learn from each other. It's a natural way of learning. And if you can't come up with your own style, find a style icon that you can start emulating and over time, you're going to be able to build your own style. 
And the final message for dressing up is dress up for the job that you want, not for the job that you have. I heard this phrase a while back and it really stuck with me because the main part of this message is that you have to dress up to the person you aspire to be. So because dressing up that way will put you in a certain kind of mindset that will then lead to actions that will bring you closer to the persona that you aspire to be. I hope that you find these tips useful and applicable in your daily life. Of course, this is not the summary of the book. There are a lot more aspects that were addressed in the book that I didn't have time to address in this video, but also there are some tips that I shared from my personal uh, experience of working as an etiquette consultant. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what are some other video suggestions that you have for me and I'll be more than happy to film new videos for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!